Hey guys, what's up everyone? Welcome to Young Titan World. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Today we're going to be talking about one particular TV show. One that is very interesting and is capable of actually taking the load off. Um, now, I think for the most part, there are a lot of TV shows that I've watched, recommended, hated, and um, just fallen in love with generally. But few of them has the scale to make me laugh very hard. I, I laugh like, you know, there is the courtesy laugh that I have that is for like, um, it's, it's for like, in general, when something is funny and it's mildly funny, I just laugh that laugh. It's like, haha. <laughs> it's a simple one, right? But then there is the one that it comes from the very heart. It's like, it's so genuinely funny that it just pops out of my mouth and it feels good when I laugh that laugh, right? Now that's the one we're gonna be talking about today because that TV show actually did that for me and I really genuinely loved it. Now, it is called My Man is Cupid. Now yes, it's a Korean series and yes, I know I've been going down um, deep, deep down into Korean dramas and fallen in love with it and it seems to be my bread and butter for each and every blessed day. But I gotta tell you, there are some perks to having only Korean dramas as your, you know, um, as your daily bread and butter, as I said to you before. Mainly because you don't have to worry about sex scenes jumping out of nowhere and making you feel like you don't have a sex life. Yeah, that sounds very insecure, but it's true. And obviously, it might not be it, but it does, does, it does give you that freedom to not think about that aspect of your life and make every single shy and coy moment that you have feel special and genuine, right? But let's talk about my man is Cupid. <laughs> is Cupid, not is a Cupid, just is Cupid. Um, before we get into it, as always, I'd like to say a very big thank you to everyone that has been listening to our episodes. Now, obviously, what happens on our podcasts is different from what happens on the YouTube channel. The YouTube channel is a way of uh, us expressing ourselves and being more acknowledging of our creative process. So it's kind of like mainly tailored towards that aspect of my life. And so the YouTube channel would not be like a mirror of what's going on in the podcast. The podcasts are on a different journey, so is the YouTube channel. So you're gonna have to like cut them with different cloths, all right? Now, obviously, um, let's get deeper into My Man is Cupid. Now, My Man is Cupid is about a man who's Cupid, basically. Yeah, that, that's right. You know, the ones that go around shooting people and making them fall in love? Exactly. But this time, he has a fucking gun. Well, I mean, he modernized it. He modernized and he's using technology. But I think mainly the skill is in what he has. He's able to turn his instruments or he's able to turn his weapons into um, tools of love, literally. Um, so yeah, he goes around making the quick love shit going on. You know, like you fall in love with someone and there's that rush, that flow, you know, the crush kind of concept. But this, the way they tell this story is so genuine is that uh, I think the reason why I feel as if this one is a little bit separate from all the kinds of love stories that start with, you know, Cupid exists and he's real, is that this one gives the title to four different people, each one of them capable of letting people fall in love. But the thing is, you can fall in love and that could not be the one you're supposed to be with forever. Now, in this story, there is fate who is a living, existing being, a concept that is, you know, like humanized. And what he does 
is that he has linked every single person to who they're supposed to be. Now the Cupids can see these lines and can decide to either go with it or go against it. So you can have people who are attached to each other by these red threads of faith, right? But the Cupids can make people fall in love with people who are not necessarily linked to each other by these threads of faith, which makes it so much more like rebellious if the Cupids decide to go against him. But the thing is, it seems like Faith himself is OP. He's more powerful than the Cupids, and so he can punish them if they decide to go against what he does, you know? And um, that's what one of them does 500 years ago. Yeah, in this kind of... Con <laughs> In this kind of, in this story, you should just assume that time has nothing to do with them because this started 500 years, 500 years ago when there was a mistake made by one of the cupids, and because of that, they lost their ability to fly. I suppose I'm not really sure as to what kind of demotion happened, but apparently there is a place where they reside, and they were cut off from that place because one of them made a mistake and fell in love with a person. Now the Cupids, the Cupids are supposed to, you know, be the authors of what love exists between two human beings, but they are not supposed to be the receptors of such love, which makes it all the more rebellious when they decide to fall in love with uh, a human being. And um, so basically fate caught one of them and uh, as punishment he burnt his wings and cut him off from i don't know heaven i'm guessing i don't really know i don't we haven't got so much deeper into it so i know what they're cut off from but they were forced to live on earth for 500 years and um every single moment we spend with these four we realize that and they are super powered beings and you'd love them but yeah we're just going around sang hyuk sang hyuk is the one who did the rebellious thing but he always he always keeps falling in love and every time fate has to teach him a lesson because he doesn't listen first he tells him don't fall in love 500 years ago, 500 years ago he doesn't listen he falls in love problem comes up boom he gets burnt in the wings second time he does he does it again and this time he's also about to do it again in fact he's already done it but there's a twist the thing is he has learned his lesson but the problem is the girl is interested in him more than he, i mean the girl is well she has a very interesting path she's an orphan first of all and on top of that she's never really have an intimate connection with anyone because every guy that has ever fallen in love with her romantically has ended up in a tragic accident or you know dead i'm, I'm thinking i'm assuming yeah it's just that everyone that comes within her uh, radar and is romantically interested in her is just like completely destroyed and uh yeah, no hope for recovery unless they break up with her. And so she has to deal with loneliness her entire life and she goes to see a shaman who is not exactly existing and uh, he tells her that she needs to go up a mountain a thousand times in order for her to re apologize on that mountain and on the thousand day, the man of her dreams is gonna come to her, a man from her past. Not just like her past, oh my god, I saw you yesterday, no! past life kind of shit like 500 years ago i was a prince you were a palace mate and we would have been lovey-dovey if it wasn't for that reckless cupid and so yeah that is where we are at when it comes to the story it's really interesting and i do love the fact that they've changed the concept of how love works in this and how you can love someone, but it would not necessarily be who you're fated to be with for the rest of your life. And so the, the concept itself becomes much more radical and much more insane. So, and um, it's, it's just very interesting to me and I really do love it though.
but um oh this one is just up to you to decide you can decide to try it out and find out tell me what you think tell me what you think if you do enjoy it i'd love to hear your thoughts and until next time take care of yourself young titan out thank you for watching and listening